In this video, I'll be building yet another power supply. The enclosure is 3D printed and all of the parts I used can be easily sourced from AliExpress. This time there is also an adjustable side, which will allow you to precisely set your voltage and limit your current. I'll guide you through the whole build process and by the end of the video, you'll be able to build your own power supply too. In one of my first videos on this channel, I converted an ATX PC supply into a lab bench power supply. I used such supplies for years and I built lots of them, but they would always break on me because they lacked important safety features and I was kinda pushing them too hard. So to make it last longer this time, I decided to make it a bit special by designing a whole enclosure around it and adding many cool features. The supply turned out great, it was a huge help on my desk and it got a lot of positive feedback so I decided to build another one. One of the most requested features in the comments was to make the supply adjustable. So this time I added an affordable power supply module which will allow me to adjust the output voltage and limit the current. On the back of the supply we have an AC inlet socket, on top is a 120mm fan for cooling and everything else lives on the front panel of the supply. It's divided in two main sections, the 24 volt side and the adjustable side. Both have have fuses for safety, main on-off switches and binding posts for connecting various cables and probes. I also added a standby LED, a couple of GX connectors and a ground terminal to the front panel. All 3D files will be available both as STL and STEP, so you can modify the dimensions and panels to your preferences. I will also make a complete shopping list down in the description to make the whole build process as simple as possible. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay is known for their high-end PCB prototyping services, but recently they expanded with 3D printing and CNC milling. 3D printing is the most interesting service to me personally and the really cool thing is that they can not only 3D print plastic but also aluminium, stainless steel and even titanium, which is just on another level. To get your quote instantly, upload your CAD files and select your settings. You can double check your file in the 3D viewer and when you're ready to order, make sure to click the first link in the description under this video. As I said in the beginning, I'll guide you through the whole build process. I'll show you all of the parts and components that are going to be needed and how to connect them together. The first thing I wanted to cover is the 3D printed enclosure. The enclosure the was designed using 6 parts in total. We have the front and back panels, top and bottom shells, and two end pieces which I printed from flexible TPU material to make them absorb vibrations from the fan inside the case. So for the enclosure it's 6 parts in total, and to connect them together we will need some hardware. Both panels are bolted to the shells using M3 bolts which are secured with 5x5mm M3 inserts. The 24V power supply unit that lives inside the case will also be secured with a couple of M3 bolts, and to secure the fan to the top I simply use the provided plastic screws. While picking the components for this project I made sure they are all easily accessible and affordable. I got everything from AliExpress and I will leave you a complete shopping list in the description below. If you decide to follow this guide, make sure you use my links since they help me fund future projects without any additional cost to you and if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to leave it a like. To connect the power cable, I used an AC inlet socket, which has its own switch and a fuse for added safety. To convert the AC current to DC, I decided to use this 24 volt power supply I had laying around from one of my past projects. It's a 24 volt, 5 amp unit with a total output power of 120 watts. To cool the components inside the case I got a 120mm PC fan and I also got a mesh cover for it to keep the dust outside the case. Since the fan needs 12 volts to run I had to get a buck converter so I can lower the 24 volts coming from my power supply to 12 volts. On the front panel we have a bit more things to cover. I wanted to be able to switch the whole unit on and off with a single power switch so I got this panel mount switch which is rated up to 250 volts and 3 amps. Above it lays a small LED holder with a 5mm LED which will shine when the power switch is in on position. To connect stuff to the supply I'm using 4mm banana jacks which are standard on all lab bench power supplies. Two sets of black and red for the two sides of the supply and a single yellow jack that will be connected to the mains ground and can be used to connect a grounding strap for example. To protect the supply from shorts I added a fuse holder on each side and to switch the sides on and off I used LED push button switches same as on the previous power supply I built. Adjustable side has its own power supply module with a display and a potentiometer and it's the XY SK35H bug boost module which which will be able to convert our 24 volts on the input to 0.6 to 30 volts on the output. The non-adjustable side simply has a standard voltmeter ammeter combo and on this side I also added some GX connectors since I plan to build a few more modules for this power supply system and I plan to power them with short cables coming from this main unit. Since I don't like switching big currents with basic push button switches, I'll use them to only control two p-channel MOSFETs which will take care of switching the main power rails. For the MOSFETs and the LEDs we will also need a few resistors and that's about it. In the end I used the 
10k resistor for the LED and 68k resistors for the MOSFETs. With all components covered we can finally dive into the build, but since a lot of people had trouble following the last video, I wanted to make this one a bit easier by making a simple schematic in Canva. There's probably a better way to do it and if you know how, please let me know down below. Everything is pretty simple and the only complex part of the circuit is connecting the MOSFETs, but if you follow the schematic everything will work the same as it did on my end. I'll be switching the live wire with the switch on the front panel and the ground terminal simply connects to the ground wire from the AC inlet socket. After the main on-off switch, the live wire connects to our 24 volt power supply. A buck converter is used to step down the 24 volt rail to 12 volts and this 12 volt rail will be used to power the cooling fan and the standby LED so we know when the power supply is turned on. The rest of the circuit is located on the front panel and is the adjustable and non-adjustable side. The adjustable side looks a lot simpler so let's take a look at it first. In order to reduce the current going through our on-off switches, I used P-channel MOSFETs to switch the rails on and off. The on-off switches are then used only to control the MOSFETs via a signal that won't draw any current. These MOSFETs have three pins, gate, drain and source. Gate pin is used to control the MOSFET, source is your input and drain is your output. When the gate pin is connected to ground, the MOSFET will conduct electricity between drain and source. And when the gate pin is pulled high, to a voltage higher than a set threshold, the MOSFET will simply stop conducting. This terminology works only for P-channel MOSFETs and N-channel MOSFETs don't work the same. From the output side of the MOSFET, I am powering the on-off switch LED so that it shines only when the switch is pressed in. The rest of the circuit is also powered from here and finally the output of our power supply module connects to the binding posts on the front panel. On the non-adjustable side everything is pretty much the same. This time we have two GX connectors connected in parallel with the binding posts on the output and instead of the adjustable supply module I used a voltmeter slash emitter display to measure voltage and current. There's a 3-pin connector with thinner wires. Red and black are for power and the yellow wire is for measuring the voltage. Two thick wires are for measuring the current and you can see how to connect them all together in the schematic. All of the components will be linked down below the video so make sure to check the description if you plan to follow this guide. So to start off the build I I'll take all of the 3D printed parts and clean them up. To get rid of stringing, I'll use my hot air gun and to remove excess plastic, I'll use my box cutter. Next step is to install the M3 inserts. They are 5x5mm in size and to install them, you simply melt them into the plastic with a soldering iron. I use this to secure the back and front panels and to hold the main power supply unit inside the case. Once you get them in, it's important that you make them flush so that the panels can be assembled correctly. The first thing I'll start connecting is the AC side, but please note that we are working with mains voltage here, which can get very dangerous and even lethal if not handled correctly. You'll have to do this at your own risk and if you're not comfortable working with mains voltage, try asking a professional for help. I'll wire up the inlet socket and this is how it should look connected with the switch in the end. Both live and neutral are getting switched and as you can see, I protected each connection with extra lock hitchings just to be safe. Since I really don't like how mains voltage feels when I touch it, I'll cover all exposed contacts with hot glue for another layer of protection. I'll take two bolts and secure the back panel to the bottom shell so I can see how long all of the cables need to be. I'll I'll secure the inlet socket with a little bit of hot glue and T7000 glue. The live wire should reach the front panel for the on-off switch, while the neutral and ground will be directly connected to the 24 volt power supply. I'll roughly place the power supply in its place and start connecting the AC side. I'll add two more wires for the ground terminal and the on-off switch on the front panel and in the end this is how everything should look. I'm going to cut three sets of black and red 18 gauge wires and connect them to the 24 volt DC side. One set will be used for the buck converter, the other for the adjustable side of the supply and the third for the non-adjustable side. At this moment this is how everything looks. We have our connections for the main on-off switch, the ground terminal and then three sets of wires for the rest of the circuit. The next thing I'll connect is the buck converter to lower the 24 volts to 12 volts so I can power my cooling fan along with the standby. LED. Before installing the buck converter, it's important we set the output voltage before connecting anything to it because we don't know what it's set to currently and that could create some potential problems. I'll set my lab edge power supply to 24 volts and connect it to the input side of the buck converter. Now using a multimeter, I'll measure the output voltage and adjust it to 12 volts. After the output voltage is set, I'll solder the buck converter to the 24 volt rail and I'll add two more sets of wires to the output. One will be used for the cooling fan and the other for the standby LED. After everything is connected, I'll put some heat over it and secure it to the power supply shell with a zip tie. Everything is ready and the next step would be to prepare the front panel. I'll take all of the connectors, binding posts, fuses, displays, etc. and mount them all to the front panel. Some of them pop in place while the others get secured with nuts. After everything is in place, I'll again use some T7000 glue to secure everything in place and so that nothing moves later on. All main voltage rails are prepared and the front panel is ready to be wired up. I'll start with the adjustable side first since it's a lot simpler. I won't go in 
much detail here since I already explained everything in the schematic. I took both MOSFETs, soldered the pull-up resistors and glued them to the panel. I tried making all connections look as neat as possible and after I got everything wired up, this is how it looked. I connected my lab bench power supply to the main two leads to test it out and as you can see everything appears to be working which is awesome. I'll continue by connecting the other side too and again all of the connections are the same as on the schematic. This side did take around 40 minutes to assemble since there were a lot of connections and after everything is connected this is how it looks. I'll try to connect this side to my lab bench power supply too so I can see if everything is connected right before assembling it all together. Everything was fine but I did make a really stupid mistake. The display was secured upside down and to rotate it I did have to resolder some connections so make sure you double check everything before assembling it all together. The display is fixed and now we are slowly getting to the end of the build. I'll connect the 120mm fan to the top shell and start connecting the front panel. I'll connect the two live wires to the on off switch and the ground to the yellow terminal. I'll connect the resistor to the LED and then connect it to the 12 volt rail. Then I just need to connect the two 24 volt rails together and that's it. Make sure everything is well protected with heat shrinks and I'll temporarily secure the front panel and tidy all the wirings. I will also put some hot glue on the AC side just to make it more safe. Everything is finally connected together and before assembling the enclosure I'll plug it in to see if everything works. And everything works exactly how I wanted it to. Time to finally close it all together and this time I'll use the TPU sleeves to complete the look of the enclosure. And with everything assembled let's do a quick overview of all of the features of this power supply. To power it up I'll insert the main power cable into the connector on the back. To turn it on I can flip the power switch on the back and you can see it light up which is awesome. I can turn the whole thing on and off with the switch on the front. The standby LED and the cooling fan turn on automatically which is perfect. Pressing the push button switch on the left side turns on the power supply module. By pressing the VA button I can set my voltage and by pressing it again I can set the maximum current. By pressing this button one more time we leave the settings menu and are left with a power meter in watts. To turn on the output I can press the power button and you can see that everything works perfectly fine. On the right side the display is always on but there is no power on the output. By pressing the push button switch the 12 volt rail becomes active and is present at the GX connectors and the binding posts. One thing that it is missing is some covers for these GX connectors since the contacts are exposed and could easily get shorted but I can easily 3D print those later without a problem. Fuse holders hold 5 by 20 mm fuses and to replace them you simply unscrew the cap and replace the fuse inside. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to leave a like if you did. If you want to see more projects like this one don't forget to subscribe and if you have any suggestions or ideas for future projects leave them down below and I'll see you in the next one.